Um, today I thought I would start by talking to you guys about human population and the environment. This is not for anybody to take offense. This is not for any of those reasons. This is just for the sole purpose of letting you know that um, we are having an adverse effect on the environment. Whether you care or not is completely up to you, but you chose to click on this video and watch it, so um, hopefully it teaches you something, okay? So <clears throat> My screen recording is covering the graph, but um, this is a graph uh, depicting, um, so we have plotted on the x-axis, we have um, years, and on the y-axis we have um, human population um, in the billions. Um, is the interval. Okay, so in hindsight, since the beginning of human time, which is debatably uh, 500,000 to approximately 2 million, and there's still debates on it, so please don't quote me on it and don't blame me if I said the wrong thing. I'm just going with the science. So, um, so approximately from 200 million, 500,000 time frame to now, uh, to, I'm sorry, to 1800, the population took all that time to get to a billion. But nowadays, it only takes 13 years for us, okay, to increase by a billion. That is substantial. Um, and there are a lot of reasons for that, but that deviates from the science. If you want me to make a video on that, I can do that. Just let me know, okay? So, um, this is good, bad, I don't know, but there is a lot of evidence that it's not a good thing. Um, and I don't know if you guys have heard of Thomas Math Thomas Robert Malthus. He came up with the idea that us humans will are going to exceed the carrying capacity, which is the um, ability for to, to sustain us humans. Um, and we already have um, and he debates whether human life is important, is it, are we supposed to be doing this to the earth? Um, but there's a lot of things that he didn't account for, so don't blame him. He didn't seem to have a bad motive. Um, I think he just didn't really account the fact that us humans have ingenious ways of living and have a lot of new technology that fends off diseases. Um, we have the ability to live longer, we have pharmaceuticals, we know how to harness things from nature to help us live longer, we are getting educated on how to eat better. But anyway, okay, deviating from science. So now I'll start talking about the types of environmental impacts. Okay, so um, first we have forestry. So nearly half of the world's original forest cover has been lost and millions of hectares uh, are cut every year, every year people, okay? Um, millions of hectares is a lot of land. Um, and uh, we've lost a lot um, on in rainforests uh, and forests, boreal forests all across the world. Trees are able to clean the air. They're amazing for the environment. Um, they provide um, ability for animals to live, they help the climate, they have so many benefits. Um, they provide food, they provide shelter, um, they provide us with shelter and food and paper and minerals and vitamins and fruits and all these different things. Um, Especially in the Amazon rainforest where you have a lot of biodiversity living in uh, the canopies of up there. But I'll talk about that later, so just wait. Um, so here I'm talking about food and water supply. Uh, so the question of food availability will become greater and greater as time goes on. So if we're depleting resources that are in nature, in the environment... Uh, more of our food is going to become processed and unreal, like just not real, fake food um, that's uh, not healthy for you. According to the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, the population is outgrowing the abundance of food um, and there's already famine. Um, El Nino this year um, is a savior to some people and devastating to other people. It's creating floods and it's creating um, droughts in other areas and people are suffering because of this. Um, so let me demonstrate to you. Us 
having a negative impact on the environment, on the climate, for example, affects climate patterns, which in turn affects food, um, which I'm sure you guys piece together, but I just wanted to explain that. And this is another one. Um, so biodiversity on Earth is vital for the continuation and ag of agriculture and medicines on Earth and to life itself. So, for example, if we don't have bees, uh, we are in trouble. Um, if we don't have certain natural medicines, we could be in trouble as well. Um, actually, there is a whole new branch of um, <clears throat> science that's coming out that deals with um, trees, specifically up on their canopies. And one of the greatest places for this to occur is in the Amazon, where you have the perfect breeding ground uh, that's able to sustain lots of forms of life. It's not a harsh environment necessarily. It is hot and humid, but it's great for flourishing of different plants and animals. And what's sad is that with the deforestation of the Amazon rainforest, we are seeing a lot of our species disappear that we haven't even likely discovered yet. Um, it, this is just based on scientific scientific models that predict um, uh, species differentiation and species um, presence within a certain area and just the fact that we don't find them there anymore. So we likely haven't even discovered them yet. Um, and human activity is pushing some, animal, some species to extinction. So biodiversity is important for many, many different reasons, which I could go into detail about. If you want me to do a whole video on biodiversity, I'd be happy to, so let me know. Um, and uh, I could do one on conservation and biodiversity as well, if you'd like. And then you guys can uh, see, learn more about biodiversity and why it's so important. But I'm just gonna, I just graze over this right now, okay? It's an urban development for really obvious reasons. Coastal cities like New York, Sydney, um, Los Angeles, Vancouver, Tokyo, um, other cities that lie in coastal areas, um, you know, South Africa, Cape Town, uh, these places are pumping all of their pollution into the ocean uh, because it's really convenient for it to go there. Um, and this in turn, oil spills, um, pollution, plastics, I talked in another video about how bad plastic is for the environment. Um, it's just really bad for the fish and the animal species and birds and, and whales, sharks, all these other things that live in the ocean. Uh, octopi, um, little tiny seahorses, which are so cute, I love them. Um, they're having a difficult time, okay? And ocean fisheries are being overexploited and pollution is high, dangerously high um, for obvious reasons. Fish boats pump oil and gas into the ocean because they need to run like um, um, bar uh, barges, cargo ships, cruise liners, all these different fish, uh, uh, speed boats, the people use for recreational purposes, um, everything pumps crap into the ocean um, and obviously people are overfishing and this is terrible uh, for the environment. Um, and it's taking out all the top feeders like your tuna and all your huge fish and it's leaving all the bottom feeders which have less uh, less minerals and vitamins in them okay so then there's climate change the earth is warming due to greenhouse gas emissions in large part from the burning of fossil fuels so quite obviously um, us having uh, I don't know if you guys heard, but there was the first red alert for pollution in Beijing. And quite obviously, that's just for the overpopulation of China. There's too many people in China. There's too many people in India. There's already one billion people and counting over a billion people already just in the country of India in that small landmass. Now, don't get me wrong. I actually wanted to point out to you guys. You could actually take the entire Earth's population, which is above 7 billion right now, and you could actually fit 7 billion people side by side within the area of Los Angeles County. So that's not to say that there's not enough space. There's space. The problem is, is that <clears throat> the ability of that space, okay, that we are occupying to sustain us. And it has so many different factors that come into it. 
more about resources, resource depletion, your climate, your geography, where you are, what you have, what is your income, what is the social status. Anyway, all these things that us humans have uh, developed with our frontal cortex, okay? Anyway, back to my friend the polar bear. If temperatures continue to rise, many coastal areas can flood due to the rise in sea level and many arctic species can die because of the warm temperatures decreasing resource potential. Little polar bear has to come south because he has nothing left in the north. Um, and because of this, us humans are killing them because they're threatening our livelihoods. They're coming into resource, um, research centers where scientists are stationed. They're coming into smaller Inuit communities, and it's obvious when they start threatening a human, what, is, what, 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 what do you think will happen? This climate change up in the Arctic is due to the fact that we're just pumping up all of these fossil fuels into the atmosphere. And this in turn um, is creating these greenhouse gases, it's trapping them, and because of this it creates a warming effect. So the last question of my entirely long video, which I'm so glad you sat down for if you are still listening to me, is that you can reduce your carbon footprint very easily. It's not hard, I'm not asking you to go join Greenpeace, jump on a boat and kill Japanese people for whaling, no, I'm not asking you to be extreme. Um, what you can do is, is you can reduce your carbon footprint and one of the best ways to do this is to turn off your lights when you're not using them, buy local produce, um, and people don't understand why uh, it's beneficial to use local produce, but it's pretty simple. You buy local just because of the fact that it takes less distance for your produce to reach you and this in turn reduces uh, fossil fuel emissions um, from planes, ships, trains, cars, trucks, stuff like that. And it's also just much healthier to eat local for your own self. It doesn't mean you have to put all these crappy chemicals into your produce so that it can can last longer and be shipped to you all the way from Patagonia so there's a good reason um, and you could go to farmers markets they have lots of farmers markets uh, there's lots of different places that you can go to get your produce locally um, I know here in Ontario it's really easy to do it um, reduce your meat consumption I'm not telling you to go vegan or vegetarian but just you don't need to eat too much meat Uncle. It's not hard to recycle. I'm sure that your city has given you alternatives of what to do and how to recycle, so you have the ability to do that. Um, you reuse whatever you can. Um, I reused a little jam jar. I put coconut oil in it. Re you can reuse your water bottles. Um, not too much though, because otherwise the plastic starts to disintegrate into the water. You could use Brita filters. Um, they're great because they clean out the water and then you could take your water bottle and put in your water and you have clean water to drink um, and you can reduce your consumption by biking or running especially if you live in big urban centers um, don't tell me that you don't have the ability to bike or walk to places or utilize public transit um, it's not hard don't complain to me about the climate and no you have the ability if you live in an urban center to do things like that so you can do it you don't need a vehicle and uh, buy Fuel efficient. I'm sorry, I spelled efficient wrong. Uh, I'm sorry, I was in a rush. Um, if you can buy a fuel efficient vehicle, they are becoming more readily available. They're becoming cheaper. Um, so I know in about 20, 30 years from now, there's going to be lots of uh, green vehicles on the market. So humans, we are not terrible. Um, some of us are, but a lot of us are taking great initiatives to um, make our earth greener and more eco-friendly and we're trying to help her out because she's having a hard time. Oh, and another thing is use energy saving appliances if you can. Energy Star appliances, it'll have like a little sign on it that says Energy Star. Use those um, and um, there's lots of other things you can do, um, but I'd go on forever. Okay, so those are really simple things that I am suggesting that you can do and I do appreciate you guys watching this video. Um, if you like, please thumbs up and if you want to see more videos like this or you have other ideas of things that you want me to talk about, please like and subscribe and comment below and let me know, okay? So take care and be conscious and happy holidays and happy 2016.